Yeah. Oh, okay. Apparently, Hi. I didn't start the recording. Now I am <laughs> recording. Go ahead. Sorry. Thank you, Megan. Yeah. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I am going to share my screen so I can give you some information about the program that I'm sharing today. Um, so we'll see if it works. Let me open it all the way. Okay. So, uh, hi everyone, I'm Megan Wagner. Um, I'm the Assistant Director for International Scholarships and Partnerships at the University of Alabama over here in Tuscaloosa. Um, and today we're gonna start off uh, this seminar with learning about what the Peace Corps is. Um, and one of their big slogans these days is make the most of your world. The Peace Corps is a US uh, government bipartisan State Department um, funded program where uh, qualified Americans can go abroad for 27 months to live, uh, work, learn, um, teach, um, do all sorts of stuff within their kind of realm of interests and skills. Um, and it's a fully funded opportunity. So I am a returned Peace Corps volunteer. Um, and my co-presenter today, Dr. Um, Susan Spazzini is also a returned Peace Corps volunteer. So we're really excited to talk to you today. Oh, let me click this through. Uh, let me give you a little information. Um, that's me in Guyana, South America. So Guyana borders Venezuela and Brazil. It's kind of a lesser known South American country um, off of the Northeastern shoulder. Um, and I was there from 2010 to 2012, and then I returned for all of 2013 and all of 2014. Um, it, the Peace Corps gave me the opportunity to work in the education sector um, with a K through 10 school, uh, working on professional development of um, my Guyanese colleagues, um, reading skills, life skills, um, health education, and things like that in a very, very rural community. I don't know if you all know much about Guyana, but they're the only they're the only officially English speaking country in South America. Um, so I spoke a dialect of English called Creolese, uh, which is based off of British standard English. Um, and actually, I think this next slide gives you a little bit of background information. So Guyana is only independent from the United Kingdom since the 1960s. So they're very young. Um, a melting pot of diversity, languages, and backgrounds in this like northeastern shoulder of South America. Um, and I was assigned to Guyana. Um, I worked with the native population in Guyana called, um, they're called Amerindians, um, in a very rural um, 700 person village with no electricity or running water, no phones or the internet. And actually right now they're experiencing extremely bad flooding like currently today. Um, and I, I really had a, a joyful and fruitful experience um, in the Peace Corps that I decided to return later on. So let me tell you a little bit about the Peace Corps and how this opportunity came about. So the Peace Corps has three missions, and it's basically to send trained men and women Americans um, abroad to countries that request them. So everywhere that Peace Corps volunteers are, it's because the government of that country wanted assistance in some sector. Um, the other two goals are to teach Americans about people of other countries and other cultures and other backgrounds and to teach people of other countries, cultures, and backgrounds about um, Americans. We are a diverse bunch. What you see on TV is not always what an American actually is, and I think that we all know that. So sending Americans abroad to be kind of in the field, um, meeting people is definitely one of the goals of the Peace Corps. Um, kind of somewhat of a non-government diplomatic role, if you will. So Peace Corps volunteers go to over 60 countries. Um, currently, there's no Peace Corps volunteers in the world. Um, 
right now due to the pandemic and the differing um, levels of, of control of the pandemic in different countries across the world right now. Um, but there are six sectors that Peace Corps volunteers normally are, are engaged in work. I, I was in the education sector, but most countries uh, also have an agriculture, youth and development, environment, health, and community economic development. I think that most Peace Corps volunteers fit into like all of these sectors once you actually get there and find out what your community needs or wants from you. But I was assigned to education. So I worked with, uh, with a school in developing um, better practices uh, for their kind of learning engagement. Um, you can see there how those sectors are broken up. 42% of volunteers worked um, or were assigned to the education sector, but I'm sure they also worked in health and agriculture as well. Um, the majority of Peace Corps volunteers do go to an African country. Um, I was in what's considered the Caribbean, uh, which is a lesser kind of represented uh, country on this map. Um, the countries change regularly depending on the needs and the funding available, um, but Guyana is still currently a country that accepts volunteers, so I hope that they keep doing that. Um, I just want to tell you a little bit about applying to the Peace Corps if it's something that you think you're interested in or want to learn more information about. Um, applications are totally online. Um, all the information that you need is found at peacecorps.gov. And the, the state of Alabama has one Peace Corps recruiter, kind of regionally located in Birmingham, but uh, nearly every state in the United States has Peace Corps recruiters um, that are available by email or sometimes they give presentations. Um, most people apply about six months in advance. And actually on the website, you can find current jobs that are available. So you can either choose the job and the country that you want to apply to, or you can put in an application that says you're willing to go anywhere and do whatever is needed based on your resume and skills. So the Peace Corps is looking for, for both types of people. Um, right now, there are some jobs available that would leave in 2022 but I expect Peace Corps to continue moving towards um, their application process, opening up wider, depending on you know, the projections for the health state of the world in the next year or so. Um, it's a fully funded program. So you get a stipend, which is like a salary based on what um, colleagues similar to you in the country would get. You get housing money, transportation, you can have a loan deferment, you get medical insurance, you earn vacation, there's a lot of career training and professional development. And I'd say one of the biggest benefits is that it truly sets you apart in a pool for employment. Um, it's not always easy to go abroad and work on your intercultural communication skills and work on your adaptation skills and really do some serious problem solving um, on the ground when, when you are the person um, who isn't in their normal kind of learned culture. Um, and it, it really can be a, a differentiating factor in a, in a pool of applicants for a job. Um, I think it just sets, sets yourself apart. So if it's something that you think you're interested in, please do some research. Um, and find out what's available and who's gone and what are some benefits um, or challenges of doing it. And then um, reach out to talk to somebody if you're interested. Um, I'm, I'm definitely available, but I'm over at the University of Alabama, um, but there's lots of people that you can find through the Peace Corps website. So with that kind of brief introduction to what the Peace Corps is, um, I would like to now introduce um, Dr. Spazzini who is also a returned Peace Corps volunteer. Um, she, she served in Paraguay. She said like from a different generation, but not really. Peace Corps volunteers kind of span the, the test of time. Um, so I will go back to the group, maybe. It worked. Oh, great. And turn it over to Dr. Spazzini. 
You're muted, Dr. Spazzini. You're muted. Okay, you're unmuted now. All right, very good. So, bienvenidos, welcome. Welcome. Right, those are my languages. Now, why did this? Here we go. All right. So learning a language, some people think, oh, I'm going to learn it just like that. It's a long process. Megan knows that when her experience with Creolese and, and um, Stacy knows it in the languages she's learned and I know it in the languages that I have learned. And learning the new language and the new culture is like going on a journey. I'm going to take you on a journey in just a minute. And these journeys are new terrain for you. They're filled with surprises. And it's sometimes like a lower a roller coaster ride. You're on a high and then you go on a low and you're turned around and, and you feel emotions you hadn't really felt before. Or like swimming in the ocean. I think some of you are from California. I am too. And you could be floating or by a wave and all of a sudden you're overwhelmed and you're underwater and you get up and you don't know where you're at. Or it's like becoming, a, or and, it's like becoming a new person. You're learning new ways of behaving and new ways of being. And all these things you can experience in Peace Corps, but in any other type of experience that's taking you to a new culture. Very often we think of new cultures being different countries, but they can also be different regions or ethnic groups in our own country here in the United States. One. Alabama pe. Mara do kwa mabe. Sha e ji ji. Ha pea she she pea ha shermana. Ha pea she ru ha she su. Ha she san Diego wa. Ha san Diego ri re she ha kuri Berkeley pe. Ha Berkeley pe i pora ha i i tu i shate. Ha u pepe she ha kuri Paraguay pe. Paraguay, hai o pepe. Ha Paraguay pe shaiko nyume itapua pe. Hetambai. Ha o pepe she mena ha she ojo rejo asunción pe. Heta she aiko asunción pe. Ha Paraguay rire shaha o pe coape. Alabama pe. Tuscaloosa pe. Ha o pe rire Birmingham pe. Shaiko Kuape, Birmingham Pe, Koana, Koana, Shaiko Kuape. Ha pe a she, she, she. Han de, 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 de. Ha po, pe a po, 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 po. I, I, por a Stacy, po, ha Karen, po. Ha mo, mo, po, mo, mo. Mo, mo, Alabama pe, coape, mo. Pico, 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 pico. What? Ha, aiko, aiko, coape, coa, coa, aiko, aiko, coa, aiko. Oga pe, aiko, coape. Mo wapico, petin, orandura, petin. Mo wapico, she. Dr. Espesini. Eje Hindu, Hindu, Colorado wa, California wa, Connecticut wa. Mo, pico, she. Okay. Colorado wa, tetin, California wa, mokoi. Connecticut wa, bohapu. She a kwa se, she a hesa she, pea, pea. She a ka, mo wa pico, Dr. Espesini. Colorado wa, hey team, Colorado wa, depo, shepo, han depo, 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 Colorado wa, pe, California wa, California wa, Stacy, 
Y por de raíz de señal capora Pat Karen. California was she? She? California. Hey, but they moko California. Ha Connecticut wa. Connecticut wa. The Hana. She, Dr. Spicini, California wa. Quape, mo pico she ai ko vai kwe. Ha California ride, mo pico she, Dr. Spicini, ai ko. Mo, mo pico she ai ko. Peru pe? Uruguay pe? Paraguay pe? Y por a Karen, y por a Stacy. Ok, Paraguay pe? Boja pu, boja pu, boja pu. Paraguay pe? Mo pico she aiko koanga, koanga, mo pico she, she doctor especina aiko. Alabama pe? Alaska pe? Arkansas. One, two. Mo pico she aiko koanga. Alabama pe? Alabama pe? Jepe she aiko se. Alabama pe? I por anterei. Alabama pe? Mo pico nde. Nde, de, de. Uandu. Nde. Nde. Pepe? Moko? Bohapu? Irandu? Po. Okay. Koanga. Mbai picon de puandu. Petin. She, she, we are three. She, moko. Petin. Bohapu? Mokoi? Mokoi? Bohapu? Irandu? Mokoi. Po. Stacy, bohapu. Karen, bohapu. Moko. Irandu, irandu. Okay. All right, guys. What did the blank screen represent? I'm going to get out of this so I can see faces. I could only see three faces while I was going through this. So I only saw Karen's and Stacy's. And so therefore they were, rep that's why I only said their names. Okay, so let's see now. There's 23 of you or 22, I can see everybody. So when I had that blank screen and was talking, why do you think I had the blank screen? Please unmute and share, just talk. Why was the screen blank when I first started? Yeah, Kathleen? Unmute. Um, I just had the last bit of it on my hands. You had a lot what? I don't, I don't know why you had the blank screen. Can somebody else maybe guess why would I put a blank screen up there? Basically, if it's just a blank screen, it's hard for you to understand anything at all. Ah. A blank screen is like- it's unsettling too. It's, it's unsettling. It's sort of disturbing. Right, so if you're gonna be in a, a community with where you don't know the language or in a classroom where you don't know the language, and if you're not shown anything to look at, you yes. don't have anything to Selena, grasp on. Selena put in the chat to represent not knowing the language. Nice, yes. Selena. Good, good, very nice. Okay, so when you were listening, trying to listen, first of all, imagine I gave started a bit in English. Megan started all in English. I started a bit, and then I moved right into a language learn a language experience for you. Um, what were some emotions? Maybe you could write them in the chat. What were some emotions that you felt? when all of a sudden I started talking and you couldn't understand anything. Please write some in the chat and Stacy will read them out. Confused. Okay. Curiosity, intrigue, frustrated. Lots of good responses. You are identical, all of you, to every other group I've done this to. I've probably done this dozens Incompetent. of times. Incompetent. Incompetent. <laughs> Makes you feel maybe dumb. Starting to relax and relate, but also frustrated. Okay, good. All right, fantastic descriptions. Thank you for sharing. All right, now, that was all just a blank screen. Then I moved into, I showed some maps. All right. So what, did your emotions change when you saw the maps? And if so, how did they change? Please type into the chat. 
Nobody changed their emotions. Nobody changed their perspective. I did a lot of work, you know. <laughs> okay. I became more curious. I started, okay. I started to relate. Jolie is like, I wonder what's going on. <laughs> okay, now of the people on the screen, I heard that some of you are from California. If so, can you put a reaction? I want to see which ones are. Like put a a clap or something. Yeah. All right. So Michelle's from California. So is Abigail, Emily, Karen. Did you notice where in California that I had lived? Berkeley? Berkeley was one. I got my uh, master's from there. Oh, that's where, where I am. <laughs> that's where you are right now. Good. Because, you know, I, I did work in Oakland and that whole area, Alameda. So oh, before I went to P uh, Peace Corps. Uh, I've got some more rep responses. Oh, good. Um, Dee Dee said she felt like I could do better connect the words from a different language to the visual representation. I knew where the language was from and see where you are from. Uh, I thought maybe you were speaking another foreign language from previous. The context was helpful as if I could make out what was happening much better. So... And there's some go bears in there too. <laughs> oh, go bears, yes, Cal. Okay, yeah, of course. Now I'm wearing red because the University of Alabama. I got my PhD where Megan works in Tuscaloosa. Okay, roll tide, and go bears. Okay, and then I'm the blazer. That I work with the blazers. So, all right. So you had an ex. First of all, uh, most of you are either from California, or Alabama, and you just happen to see both maps. So that is reassuring when you can connect to something that you know. And um, then I wasn't able to see how many people were answering with the one, two, three, like where I was from, which was California, where I went later, which was Paraguay, where I'm in now, Alabama. Those were the three questions. I think the ones that you actually saw were the ones who were responding. <laughs> well, and that's okay. Everybody was thinking, everybody was thinking. And I tried really hard with pictures. I tried really hard with motions and um, body language. And when you go in the Peace Corps and you go to a language, I went to Paraguay, I'd studied Spanish. I was a German and Spanish teacher, but then I had to also learn Guarani. And the interesting thing is I, my, the vocabulary I was learning in Guarani to start off with like corn, jungle, planting, um, the grinding the corn, all sorts of very mandioca, all sorts of vocabulary that I'd never learned before in the other languages I'd learned because you learn it in context. You learn it for what you need. Now, an interesting chat came in, which was at first I didn't get what the fingers meant. Then I realized we were making choices as you repeated things in a pattern. So repeating things in a pattern really, really helps with learning languages. That's what we do with young children. We repeat it, we show it, we repeat it. And actually they go a long time without saying words that are understandable um, because even as an infant, they're listening to us. So it takes a long time to learn another language. And uh, I just really enjoyed giving you this presentation and maybe I'm going to send this back now um, to Megan or, um, to Stacy and let them move forward with it. So, so as you can see, we wanted you to see the opportunity about what it would be like if you had to like all of a sudden dump yourself into learning another language. Also, one of the things, and Peace Corps is an option for overseas opportunities. Um, Megan, can you clarify, uh, most of my students here are community college students. I think you have to have a bachelor's degree to get into Peace Corps, is that correct? Or can you do it with an associate? So Peace Corps, when I applied maybe 12 years ago, Peace, like they said something like 90% of Peace Corps jobs required a bachelor's degree. Um, but in the last five or so years, Peace Corps has become a lot more accessible. Um, and they take life experience, um, like if you grew up on a farm or if you have um, certain skills, like they value that a lot more now. 
um, they also started to allow like uh, people who aren't married to serve as partners together. So they're like making progress towards making their application kind of more um, kind of inclusive to lots of people who are interested in this type of experience. But I'm not sure where an associate's degree fits into their like re requirements. Currently though, you can actually see a job. Like you used to apply to the Peace Corps and just send it out into the universe and they would tell you what you should do. And now you can go to the website and actually like click on a job in a country and see what the required and um, what's the one Re skills required and requested mm -hmm. um, skills are. So I would definitely look into it. There's probably options with associate's degree. I'm just not sure how they've changed recently. So, so it's probably a combination of education and experience uh, if, if that's the case. Sometimes they are very specific and that is something if you're really interested in Peace Corps, I think it's really important that you look now and you know maybe you think you'll wanna do that after your bachelor's degree, you know, and maybe you can target some of your training that you're gonna do in the next couple of years towards Peace Corps. So the other thing that you're learning here, and this is what Dr. Spasini's expertise is, is education. And her program, she teaches uh, educators to teach English language learners. Um, Dr. Spasini, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, it's my pleasure. Um, yes, uh, in Alabama, in order to be an ESL teacher in a school, K-12 school, you would get a master's degree in ESL. And you could do that at several institutions. And uh, if you want to teach ESL to adults, if it's in a community program and they're coming for free, you're going to be teaching as a volunteer. There's just there's very few jobs right now for teaching English to adults, ESL to adults, that is that are full time positions. There were more a few years ago, and hopefully in the future there will be more again. Now, California, of course, has so many more people than Alabama, but they also have so many more opportunities for the teaching of ESL um, in community colleges. They have a lot of programs on college campuses and in communities as a whole, and of course at schools. So each state has its own requirement is what it takes to be a teacher. But in ours, it's a master's degree. It's 30 credit hours. In Alabama talk, it's 30 credit units. It's 30 units in California talk. And um, so it takes about two years because most people doing the masters are working to earn a living. And so we don't have any full-time students pursuing our masters. So does anybody have any questions? You're feel free to open up if you have questions about Peace Corps, about working abroad or about education and teaching ESL. Anyone? I have a question. I wondered what the uh, if there are age limits or anybody can do it, whether you're even if you were 18 with a master's degree or 92 with a master's degree. Okay, well, to do a master's degree, you first need a Bachelor of Arts, so degree or Bachelor of Science, an undergraduate degree. So maybe the youngest we've had starting the master's is 21 or 22. However, the majority of our people doing the master's are seasoned professionals. Um, they have, they might be in their mid to late twenties, have taught two or three years or five years in the schools, or they could be in their forties seeking a career change, or they could be in their fifties seeking post-retirement activity. So we've had somebody even in their early sixties who started and completed the master's degree. Does that help? Yes. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We really appreciate having the uh, graduate students from a great diversity, not just multicultural, multilingual from different states. Um, like we have one now out doing online because our program is now going online from Michigan, another did from South Dakota, another one did it from Nevada. We've got a few now from Georgia. So yeah, we don't just have Alabamians doing the master's degree. Anybody else? Yeah, Dr. So. Well, I want to thank Megan and Dr. Spazzini. Thank you so much for taking your time. Uh, I hope one, Dr. one other thing, Stacy. Oh, sure. yeah, sure. I've got, if they want to see some slides, I can show them a couple pictures. Oh, sure. Please do. Feel free.
Okay. Okay. So that's a Nyanduti lace from Paraguay, and it's hand embroidered. And this is one of their artisan products. Each circle is a different design. Each of the kind of flower things is a different design. So within the diversity of the design, we have unity. So that's how we're looking at the world is unity. And this is the same map that Megan showed, showing, I took it off the website this morning from Peace Corps, showing where everyone is. And today, both of us as returned Peace Corps volunteers are served in South America, two different, very different parts of South America, but both in South America. And um, we're called return Peace Corps volunteers because as a Peace Corps volunteer, you have a spirit to always be volunteering. But I didn't return until 26 years after I went to Peace Corps. I was in Peace Corps two years, stayed a third year, met my husband, got married, and stayed there 26, a total of 26 years. So, you know, I like I was like 25 when I left California, then 26 in Paraguay, and now I'm working on being in Alabama a long time. So like three homes. And the first thing that happened to us when we stepped in country in Paraguay, and this was in 1976, before many of you were born, was they handed us this mate, which was this container, either wood or a cow's horn or a gourd. And I had yerba, which was a type of tea in there with cold water. And they say, gave it to us and said, this is called terere and it's Paraguayan. And if you wanna make friends and be part of the community, you will learn to drink it. And then you sip it out and then give it back to the person who's serving. And with one of the um, thermoses there, then they fill it, put it in again and hand it to the next person. And, like, and it goes around, everybody there, six, seven people are all drinking this from the same straw. And I'm, my question is, what has, have they been doing during COVID? Um, this would not be very wise to do during COVID. Then this would be a rural school that's in great condition because it's made of brick and it has tile roof. And so often it's just sort of waddling you know, sticks and thatched roof really in the, con in the countryside. And this would be like teacher training and it's more comfortable outside. Then Jesuit runes, which shows the um, starting of Paraguay in the 1500s with Jesuits that came in from Spain. And then a cathedral, which a Catholic uh, Catholicism being the primary language, but a uh, primary religion, but many other religions are there. And then music is very important. And so this is a home cottage industry uh, producing harp, the harp and Harp music and guitar music is their primary music. And the main factor of Peace Corps is people. And so here you see probably a grandmother and a grandchild and doing then some other type of artisanry um, and uh, the same type, Nyanduti. So at any rate, I just put a handful of pictures here that uh, to show you, just give you a little bit of taste of Paraguay. Any other questions? So I'm gonna thank you again, Megan and Dr. Spassini. Um, I really appreciate you taking your time. And as always, I do think that they're open to questions. If you think of things later, I will be sharing their contact information when I do the follow-up links. So um, you're having lots of thank yous and bravos in the chat, if you haven't seen that. Uh, Courtney says, thank you, Dr. Spassini and Megan. The application infographic made the process much less daunting. Separate from expected grammar and comprehension, does the core permit instructors to develop their curriculums fairly independently? That's a good question. Where are we? Uh, it said, Courtney, I, I think she sent it to everyone, so you should be able to see it. Oh, yeah, here we go. Yeah, I, I would say that kind of the backbone of working in, in a school in the Peace Corps is that you have a lot of ideas about what you wanna do, but you have to meet the needs of the community that you're in. Mm -hmm. So Peace Corps does take into account your background. So I did not have a degree in teaching. I was just excited <laughs> um, and had a bachelor's degree in something. So they put me they at kind of a very basic grassroots level in a very underperforming school. 
but my cohort of people also had, um, we had a, a man in his 70s with a PhD in higher ed. We had people with master's degree in secondary, um, secondary school teaching. And those people were placed at kind of more influential levels. So um, it, it all depends. Everything's country specific, but if you have an interest in something like curriculum development, Peace Corps can use you and place you somewhere that that can be useful, as opposed to maybe somewhere as, as, as truly grassroots as me, where a student could go to this school for 12 years, graduate and not know how to read. So they kind of put you all over. My right. nephew served in Peace Corps. He did two years in Guatemala. He did water purification projects in a rural village. And his background was a bachelor's in English. And it really had to do with, they put him where he was needed because he went, I don't necessarily want to teach English. I just want to go do stuff. So, and they took him at that, but they took him and they put him there and he stayed there for two years and then ended up renewing for an extra period of time because mm -hmm. they were finishing the project up. And then he came home and, uh, but his, he never had studied Spanish before much before he left yeah. and he knew a lot and he learned um, the local indigenous language right. too. So. So, so he, uh, when you go, you get three months of training. That's yeah. why it's 27 months, three months of training that includes what you're going to do if it's water purification, if it's teaching, if it's health, if it's building latrines. One of the first questions in a rural school that I went to, the teacher took it to one room schoolhouse, took me to the latrine and said, do you think the children have done a good job cleaning it? I guess so. You know, I, I didn't know that wasn't part of my training, how to clean latrines. Now, another group was building latrines, but the cleaning of it, I wasn't, you know, so you could ask all sorts of questions. Um, now, we did have, a, for a while, at UAB and throughout California, they had what was called Master's International, where students would start their master's degree with us and then do their um, practicum part of it as a Peace Corps volunteer. So one of our folks went to Macedonia, Another went to the island of Tonga, and a part of his Peace Corps training was water safety in the ocean. Now, I can assure that the next one who went to Lesotho, which is in the middle of South Africa, and it's above 3,000 feet, the whole country is just mountaintop. He did not get training on water safety in the ocean, right? He probably got on how not to fall off the mountain. So you get training based on a lot on health, a lot on protection, not just women, but women and men, protection, how to, how to, what behaviors you have to do to keep yourself safe, right? And the risk factor is, we have risk factors here. You don't know when something's crazy gonna happen here. So yeah, it uh, is a wonderful experience and I highly recommend it, even so many years after the fact. My sons didn't go in Peace Corps. They said they grew up at, like in Peace Corps. They didn't have to go back into it because they grew up in Paraguay. So, um, but it is, it really helps establish a career. Many people who went in as a generalist, such as Stacy's nephew who went in and did water purification, actually find their career. And when they come back, they choose a master's degree or employment related to what they learned how to do in Peace Corps because they become so passionate about it. Hey, my grandma served in the Peace Corps in Lesotho when she was 67 years old. Back, wow. in, back in the early 90s, apartheid was still happening in South Africa. And it was, um, it, it was, I was four years old at the time. And when she came back, that was my first introduction to like challenging yourself to, to go and do the thing, you know, life mm -hmm. is only so long. So I mm -hmm. kind of grew up with that influence. And, well, and, and that also tells you the dream never has to die. <laughs> you know, that's if right. you can't do it now, do it when you can. So. And see, I was in the seventh grade when President Kennedy announced on TV and I watched the news that Peace Corps was launched. And I saw the first volunteers get off in Ghana or wherever they were taken. And I'm going, wow, I'm going to do that. Okay. So we don't, you don't know what spark, what catalyst is there that, and at what age, that says this is something great for you to do.
guys got a wealth of knowledge here, go for it. If you have more questions, if not, we will stop the recording now.